Bonjour à tous. Over the last few weeks, our women and men in uniform have been working to help the most vulnerable Canadians as we deal with this pandemic. And as the need for their help continues, we've received new requests to extend this period of deployment in both Ontario and Quebec, and we will be following up. Members of the Canadian Armed Forces are doing an incredible job, just like always. They are serving with distinction for our grandparents, our parents, our elders. In Ontario, they've made some extremely troubling observations about several long-term care facilities in which they've been serving, and we have shared this information with the provincial government. As I've said many times, we need to do a better job of caring for the people who built this country. The greatest generation saw us through World War II, and we need to be there to support them properly through this global crisis. I spoke with Premier Ford on this earlier this morning to let him know that, of course, we would be there to help as he takes action on improving care for seniors in long-term care centres. Our government will continue to support Ontarians through this, and I know this is something the Premier will be addressing in greater detail at his press conference later today. This morning, I also want to provide an update on personal protective equipment. In the last 10 weeks alone, over 40 flights have arrived in Canada carrying much-needed PPE. This represents hundreds of thousands of items, everything from masks to hospital gowns, that we've shipped to our frontline workers. At the same time, we're also investing in production here at home. And on that front, today, we're taking yet another critical step forward. I can announce that we've signed a contract with General Motors to produce 10 million face masks. As we speak, GM employees are already making these masks. They will keep people safe and help slow the spread of COVID-19. And for the auto workers in Oshawa, this contract will support good, well-paying jobs in an industry that's faced tough times. On testing, we're also making progress. We're supporting companies and research centres across the country as they develop new, improved COVID-19 test kits and products. And for life-saving healthcare equipment, we've signed a new contract for 10,000 ventilators that are being produced through a partnership between Canadian Nobel laureate Dr. Art MacDonald, his team, and Vexos. Deliveries will begin this summer, bringing our total of Made in Canada ventilators to 40,000. On this and on other supplies for frontline workers, I know that Minister Baines and Minister Anand will have more details to share a little later today. Au cours des dix dernières semaines, plus de 40 avions transportant de l'équipement de protection individuelle sont arrivés au Canada. On parle ici de centaines de milliers d'articles, notamment des masques et des jaquettes d'hôpital, qui ont été distribués à nos travailleurs de première ligne. En même temps, on travaille avec des entreprises d'un bout à l'autre du pays pour augmenter notre capacité à fabriquer ces articles chez nous. Aujourd'hui, je peux annoncer qu'on a signé un contrat avec General Motors pour produire 10 millions de masques. Au moment où on se parle, des employés de GM ont déjà commencé leur travail et les premiers lots de masques seront bientôt terminés. En ce qui concerne le dépistage, on réalise aussi des progrès. À travers le pays, on appuie les entreprises et les centres de recherche qui conçoivent des nouveaux tests pour la COVID-19. Et on fait la même chose pour les respirateurs. On a signé un contrat pour produire 10 000 respirateurs qui seront fabriqués dans le cadre d'un partenariat entre Art MacDonald, lauréat canadien du prix Nobel, son équipe et l'entreprise Vexos. Over the past two months, we've rolled out targeted support for sectors that have been hit hard by COVID-19. And we know that more needs to be done. Just look at the food industry. With the growing season underway, farmers are working harder than ever to keep Canadians fed. But because of COVID-19, many are having trouble finding workers. So today, I can announce that our government is funding up to 700 youth jobs in that industry. This will support the people who put food on our plates while creating new opportunities for young people. This builds on what we've already done, 
from connecting more Canadians of every age with work in the sector to supporting seasonal workers. À ce temps-ci de l'année, les agriculteurs travaillent plus fort que jamais pour nourrir les Canadiens. Mais à cause de la COVID-19, bien des employeurs ont beaucoup de difficultés à trouver des travailleurs pour les aider. On va donc financer jusqu'à 700 emplois pour les jeunes dans ce secteur. Ça va donner un coup de main à ceux qui nourrissent nos familles, tout en créant des opportunités pour les étudiants cet été. In the last weeks, Canadians have been focused on our families and on our neighbors, on our communities and our country. But we've also been closely engaged with how the world is managing COVID-19. Not only because the only way to truly end this virus in Canada is to end it everywhere, but because as a trading nation, with Canadians who trace their origins to every corner of the planet, we understand better than most how connected the world has become. Canadian jobs and businesses depend on stable and productive economies in other countries, so it matters to us how everyone weathers this storm. For so many, this pandemic is devastating. More than 300 million people around the world will be out of work, and more than 30 million people will be pushed into extreme poverty. We can't wait for others to act. It's not in our self-interest, and it's just not who we are. We can and we must seize the opportunity to do what we can to make people safer and more prosperous, to create an international system that recognizes who's left behind and strives to lift them up. This is no small task, but I know we're up to it. Canada is ready to do our part as we help bring the world together in the fight against COVID-19. On Thursday, I will be convening a high-level meeting with the Secretary General of the UN and the Prime Minister of Jamaica to consider global economic challenges and how to better support developing countries. We're bringing together leaders from every region of the world, as well as the heads of international institutions, to work on shared strategies to protect the global economy, support our citizens, and help the most vulnerable. I've been speaking to many leaders about these issues and about the importance of global cooperation. This includes Chancellor Merkel of Germany and President Macron of France just yesterday, and leaders from the Caribbean and from across Africa, Latin America and the Pacific and key international financial experts like Canada, Canada's own Mark Carney are getting involved too. To address this pandemic, to keep people safe, to help our economies weather the storm, we need to collaborate. And with this forum, Canada will be there to help lead the way forward. Le Canada est un pays commerçant avec des liens familiaux partout dans le monde. Nos emplois Nos entreprises, nos travailleurs, notre économie dépendent en partie d'une économie mondiale en bonne santé. Et en pleine pandémie, on ne peut pas se fermer les yeux sur le monde dans lequel on vit. On ne peut pas oublier les plus vulnérables, que ce soit les gens qui vivent dans les régions éloignées ou ceux qui habitent les Caraïbes. Pour beaucoup d'entre eux, la pandémie, c'est une catastrophe. En tant que Canadiens, on sait qu'on a un rôle à jouer. On peut et on, do, on se doit de bâtir un monde plus sûr et plus prospère pour tous et veiller à ce que notre système international soit plus juste et plus égal. C'est un défi de taille, mais je sais qu'on est à la hauteur. Jeudi, je convoque une réunion de haut niveau avec le secrétaire général des Nations unies et le premier ministre de la Jamaïque pour examiner les défis économiques auxquels le monde fait face et trouver différentes façons d'aider les pays en développement. Ce sera l'occasion pour les dirigeants de se réunir et d'élaborer des stratégies pour protéger l'économie mondiale, soutenir nos citoyens et aider les plus vulnérables. <coughs> J'ai discuté de ces questions et de l'importance de la coopération internationale avec plusieurs dirigeants. J'ai notamment parlé hier à la chancelière d'Allemagne Merkel et au président français Macron, et j'ai aussi échangé avec des dirigeants des Caraïbes, de l'Afrique, de l'Amérique latine et du Pacifique. Et bien sûr, des experts financiers de renommée internationale, comme le Canadien Marc Carnet, vont aussi participer. Si on travaille ensemble, 
et qu'on reste concentré sur ce qu'on doit faire, je sais qu'on va passer à travers ensemble et revenir en force. Merci.